something to give God praise.
could have played with the Brian Stacy with me. Yeah. So wrong. <laughs> she told me she'd start by way of saying it. of a Savior who would be born in Bethlehem. Preparation means to get ready, 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 get ready. Help to be ready to welcome you, O God. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight. And the rough way smooth. And all mankind will see God's salvation. In Luke chapter 3 verse 4 through 6. You don't like the two candles? Hope and preparation this morning. Exodus. 
chapter 40, verses 34 and 35. Exodus chapter 40. Verse 34 and 40th chapter of Exodus, verse 34 and 35, 34 reads like this and reads from the New King James Version. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Dear Heavenly Father, here I am again, and I need you to be with me. Speak to me and speak through me. Send fresh man from on high. Send fresh word from on high. Speak to me, speak through me. As I speak to this your people, God, I pray you open the ears of the hearers, the hearts of the receivers, that your word will fall on good and fertile ground and produce fruit in days to come. Yes. I pray you keep me humble, obedient, submissive, and sensitive to your spirit. Keep me ever at the foot of the cross, where you get the glory, the honor, and the light of me, your servant. Oh, God, I pray, God, that you let the words of my mouth, yes. the meditation of my heart, my words, and my thoughts be your words and your thoughts. Yes. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These blessings I ask in Jesus' name for your glory. In your son Jesus we pray. And we thank you. Amen. Look at verse 34 and 35 again of the 40th chapter of Exodus. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rest above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So the time we share together, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk on the subject of the power of the cloud, the presence of God. The power of the cloud and the presence of the Lord. You give me 15 minutes, I'll get out of your way. Here in this 40th chapter of the book of Exodus, Moses was in a place where the tabernacle was erected and arranged. The tabernacle was built and arranged. And as the tabernacle was built and arranged, there were workers to work, to build, to erect the tabernacle. Now the King James says tent. It says tent, yeah. But in the King James, another version, it says tabernacle. Uh, I'm going to use another word. The church. Building. Because you're the church as persons. But I'm talking about the church building. And so they were erected in the church unto the Lord. And as we look at verse 34, and I just love it. First of all, going further, we always hear the word Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory. But do we know, really know, or know the meaning of the Shekinah glory? <laughs> I'm going to say that. The meaning of the Shekinah glory means he calls 
the dwelling and the divine presence of God was in the place. Catch what I just said. The divine presence of the Lord was in the place. It was, it, it, was, it was not so much the people's presence. It was a Chicago glory of the Lord being in their presence. We need in the 21st century churches the divine presence of the Lord yes. Yes. in our midst. Because when God is in the midst and takes control of the worship, things can run in place and people can be delivered and be set free. Yes. Amen. 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 It's very imperative that we come with the mind of the presence of God to be in the house. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going through something and they need God to bless. Someone don't know what to do, how to handle a situation that they're facing, or even going through presently. Yes. And the God of our salvation has to be present amongst us to show us what to do next. Yes. Because we don't know what to do. And because we're going through it, it's been very devastating and very burdensome. And so we need God's presence to show us what to do. And the next step. Verse number 34, let's just break it down. Can I just teach this? Thank you. I got some witnesses. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting. And the cloud covered the tabernacle of the meeting. The word cover in the, in the text means the, 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 the cloud just spread all over the building. Can I just say one thing like this? It was not just one side of the building, the glory, the glory now came. The Bible says, the text says, that it covered the tabernacle of meeting. Where they were assembling, where they were meeting, the presence of God was in the room. Mm. Cover, spread over the tabernacle, mm -hmm. which was a place in the King James. I said it's a tent. In the King James, the New King James, another translation says the tabernacle. Other places, the other things it says it's a place mm -hmm. where they will assemble. The other places, the thing says a dwelling place yeah. where they dwell. What's this? Yeah. A sacred tent of Jehovah. Right. A sacred tent temple. Or tent of God. Oh my. The meeting was meeting the congregation. Mm -hmm. Those that assembled. And they assembled in an appointed place. Mm. A designated place. The church. Watch this. And I'm going to be those wrong, but he said, and the glory cloud. Mm -hmm. Feel the tabernacle. This word glory means his splendor. Mm -hmm. Feel, watch this. Ooh, Jesus. Does it say the Lord's house? It doesn't say your house. It don't say my house. It says the Lord's house. Mm. And the glory of the Lord fill the house. Not a man's glory. Let's go further. Not a bishop's glory, not a prophet's glory, not an apostle's glory, not a, pro a prophet's glory. The Lord, the glory of the Lord, filled the tabernacle. The presence of the Lord filled the house. Mm. His splendor, his overflow. Feel the house. The word feel means rest. Mm. The glory rested on the tabernacle as well as in the tabernacle. Oh, Jesus. It rested. Wait, 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 wait. Let's ask the question to the text. Why? 
the glory rests in the tabernacle. It's because everybody was in unison mm -hmm. and allowed the glory of the Lord to fill the temple. Yes. I got to go like the old folks used to do back years ago. I used to hear them say, uh, when it was on 449 Illinois Street, they said when it was on 2nd Street. Let me go back that far. When they were down on 2nd Street, and they would walk to church. And on their way to walk in the church, they were praising God on their way to church. What I'm saying is, their minds were prepared for church and for worship and the presence of the Lord to be in the midst of them. They came. Let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 2. Verse number one. And they were all in one place. They were not in separate places. They were all in one place. And they were all with one accord and one mind and one spirit. In one place. And what happened was, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Ghost fell on them. Because they were in unison and ready for the presence of the Lord, woo, Jesus, to be in the house. They're all assembled in Jerusalem. They're all in the same mind. They all have the same spirit. They came for worship. They really they came for the Holy Ghost. They came to receive the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. They did not have a separate agenda. They all had the same agenda is to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And because they had the same mindset, the same unison and one accord, God, the Bible says in Acts 2, it rested on them. Which means it set on them. No, he set on them. Because it's the third person of the Trinity. And he, the Holy Ghost, set on them. And the Bible said, they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Because they came with purpose, with one mind, with one spirit, and with one accord. And God stopped by and visited in the upper room. Well, this 34th verse, it filled, the glory filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This was the final confirmation for Moses and the people that all the work was set up for God's dwelling place and to be properly done because they were working hard to build the tabernacle. And now the tabernacle is complete and they have worked tediously to build God's house. And so listen to this, properly done. And all the tedious instructions, was, all the tedious instructions were obediently followed. Obediently followed. At least we understand that obedience in the construction of the tabernacle was very important for the presence of the Lord to be in the tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody who had a hammer and a nail, two by four, were all in unison in building the tabernacle. Yeah. And by that end, in the construction of the tabernacle, the use of and following the instruction, even, even in the tedious construction and building of the tabernacle, they all were still with unison. And when they, got, when they got through and complete, God blessed the tabernacle with his glory over the glory, over the, the tabernacle. His glory cloud was over the tabernacle. But I like verse number 35. Because 34 said the glory cloud was over, over, hovering over the tabernacle. But 35 says Moses couldn't get in. 
the glory was so strong on the tabernacle, the pastor could get in. The glory of the Lord was so prevalent. The glory of the Lord was so strong that Moses, the Bible says, could not enter in the temple. Mm. He could not. Ooh, the meeting place. Because the cloud rested on it. And he just sat there. It stayed there. It didn't go nowhere. It was there. And even Moses couldn't get through the time. I like this. Because he is 35 with this. Fuck with further. Uh, it rested above it. It settled on it. It remained on it. It dwelled there. It resided there. Oh, wait a minute. Why did it reside there? Thank you, Lord. Because they wanted to be there. You got to want the glory cloud to be in the house. You got to pray that the Lord glory cloud be in the house. Let me take you back to uh, Ezekiel, back to the Holy Ghost. You remember when God tells ooh, Ezekiel and takes him to the body of the dry bones? He tells and gives Ezekiel instructions what to do. He says, speak this and this to the four corners of the wings. And so let me use my imagination. I believe Ezekiel, when God instructed him to speak to the wind, to blow on those bones, listen to this, and blow life in those bones. I believe that Ezekiel started to speak to the west wind. Blow west wind. I believe Ezekiel started to pray, blow on the west east wind. I believe Ezekiel prayed, Lord, let the south, woo, Jesus, the south wind, the south wind blow. I believe Ezekiel said, Lord, blow the north wind on these bones. And so what happened? Every corner of the earth, there was some wind blowing. On all these bones that were dead, had no life. He blows, asks God to blow the winds and speak to the wind. And we need to thought as God speak to the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord fill your tabernacle. Let the glory of the Lord fill your house. Let your presence fill the house. The word of God. Everyone. Every pew. Everything. Let it grow. And let your presence fill the house. Your power fill the house. Move God. Move God. In our midst. Watch this. And the glory cloud, Stephen 35, and the glory cloud. Feel the Lord. Feel the glory. No, the glory cloud. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The honor of the Lord. The splendor of the Lord. Feel the tabernacle. Mm. His glory, his presence filled the house. Well, let me give you a couple more little spoiler scriptures of this. I'm going to get out of your way. And you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 14. This is what it says. Because remember, Moses could enter in verse 35 of Exodus 40. He could get in because of the glory. Watch 2 Chronicles 5 and 14. It says, and, the, and that the priests, the priests could not continue. Watch this, could not continue. Oh, watch this, y'all. Could not continue ministry because the cloud. Listen to me, at least you understand that they were ministry. And all of a sudden, in the ministry, the glory came through the house. 
and they could not, let me just wait, you understand, no. they could not continue preaching because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. It was so strong, Sister Mary, it was so thick. I'll get to that in a minute. It was so strong and so thick that the priests, the preachers had to stop ministry. Because when the glory of God is in there, he's going to do what he wants to do. Amen. And when you are invite the glory of the Lord in the house, the Shabbat glory in the house, he will interrupt your normal stuff. Yes, Why does he interrupt your normal stuff? Because some, the, the, the Lord knows who needs to be blessed. Yes. Yes, he, does. Yes, he, does. he knows who really needs him, uh -huh. who really desires him. Yes. While well, in the midst, in the time of ever, he knows, so he'll interrupt. Your routine. Even if it ain't but one person, he'll interrupt a whole thing and to minister to one person. Thank you, Lord, I've got something. You are coming to God's house and ask God, minister to me. That's right, because you said something, Lord, do it for me. And then you're both right now. Yeah. And then that, and that, that just allowed me to say this. I believe when they said, Lord, do it for me. Yeah. Right now, they're going through. Yeah. They hear some stuff. They, they yeah. can't help it themselves. And then you got, God, do it yeah. for me yeah. right now. Right now. And I think mean, that's why the songwriter was going through something. He said, Lord, do it for me. Yes. And so they could not minister because of the cloud. But listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. I love this latter part of verse number 14. It could be to you because of a little cloud. But watch this. For the glory of the Lord. Wait a minute. The glory of the Lord. You see it? So it's projected. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Feel. God's house. This is God's house. Ain't no man's house. The man or the woman is the other shepherd to the shepherd. This is God's house. Listen to what it says. Read what it says. The Lord part it says, For the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Not the glory of a man. Not the glory of a woman. But the glory of the Lord. The house of God. The church of God. Mm. Mm. It's filled. It's filled. God's house was filled because the people who came were ready to be filled. You got to come to church and want to be filled. You and I can just come to church just like a day ago since I had because we went to church when we were kids. You got to come. I got to come to church for purpose. I keep saying purpose. Y'all know we're going to stand it. You got to come to church for purpose. I got to come to church to receive from you, God. I come to get what you have for me, God. These people came to church and the city and the temple for God to do something for them. And so therefore, they prepared themselves for the worship of praise and God's glory filled the house. Okay, let me hear you. Don't, don't get mad at me, but I'm going to tell you what God said. Say. You can't come to church with your own agenda. Amen. You cannot. And expect God to move. Have your way in our worship, God. That we be blessed. We be strengthened. We be encouraged. We be healed. We be delivered. All be so free. We gotta be free of ourselves. Yes. Yes. We gotta free ourselves and wanna be free. Yes. It makes no sense. Hear me. To sit in the tabernacle and don't 
and don't give what God has for you. God is in the place to bless you, to meet your need, to strengthen you, encourage you, lift you up, and open doors that are closed your face. We, okay, can I go back to for just a minute? Because we're in the, we're in the sixth church of the seven churches. And watch this. In verse number seven. Now it's really verse nine. Verse 9 says, God speaks through John to the church of Philadelphia. Yeah. He says, I know your works. This is me. I know what you're doing. What's I, and I know your heart. <laughs> I know what's in you. And you have been, what's, and you have been faithful. You have been committed. You have given yourself totally to me. And this is, I have set before you. Y'all jump and I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you. Because you keep doing what God said to do, and because you keep being led by God and the Spirit of God, He says, I have set before you an open door. He goes on in that last verse, He says, and no man can shut it. Y'all can't say it? Yes. Yes. Now that I said it was tonight, any case you encourage you to do right, yes. be right, yes. think right, yes. talk right, yes. act right, because he has set before you an open door. Yes. And no man can shut it. Yes. Can nobody help your house from there? Yes. What do you mean as big as a rock? Yes. But it can't be shut it. Because God has opened the door for you because of your faithfulness. Ooh, Jesus. That's shouting stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very sit on one night. That, that, that stuff makes you shout. Yeah. Or really dance. Yeah. Or she really did shout. Yeah. <laughs> Lifting her voice up. Yeah. Because when you think about it, if you keep doing what is right, you keep thinking right, you keep talking right, you keep feeling right, you keep doing right, and God says, I have set before you, I set in front of you, an open door, and nobody can shut the door I open for you. Oh, Jesus. The door I have set for you. Okay, watch this. I know you'll keep up with him. This door open. He opened this door for me, and since he opened the door for me, Number one, I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to be doing. Number two, I'm going to walk in with the gift. Man. The door is open. And I'm walking through the door, and every blessing that's in the door is for me because he's opened the door for me because I've got the right mindset, the right attitude, the right spirit, and the right thing to do. And he's opened the door, and there's a bunch of blessings in the open door. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The enemy. The enemy. The door's open. You hear me? The door's open. He's trying to shut it. I can't stop thinking right. I can't stop talking right. 
I say stop doing it because when I stop, stop doing that, watch what happen. When I stop doing those things, they got me the blessing. Do you see how easy the door was shut? Because I stopped doing what I was doing. That's how easy to shut when you stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. But as long as you do what you're supposed to be doing, he can't shut it. He can't do it. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. If you still follow me, it's going to be projected anyway. Don't worry about it. It's going to be projected. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. The Lord says, say, I'm done. And he says the same. And I call it Second Chronicles, chapter 7, 1 through 3. I call it the glory of God's way. The glory of God's good will. All right. This is what he says. When Solomon <laughs> had finished praying, before I go any further, Solomon was dedicating the temple to the Lord. I want to stop for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Then this is what we're going to take. He built the temple his daddy David could not build. Listen to me. He builds what King David could not build. Yeah. David was supposed to build it, but he could not build it. So now Solomon, his son, builds what David was supposed to build. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He dedicates the temple to the Lord. I want to say this to all of us, including myself. As I look at this, and as he just revealed this to me, he dedicates the, de the temple to the Lord. He dedicates the building to the Lord. The temple is the church. Let's go this route. Thank you, Lord. You and I need to rededicate ourselves to the Lord. Yeah. Oh God, I need to be amen. I'm say it one more time. You and I need to rededicate our lives back to the Lord. Dedicate ourselves back to the Lord. Especially in this, in this, this pandemic, this critical time, and this new virus that has come, they don't know how bad it is. Uh, when it, you know, they don't know all, all the, the stuff that goes along with it. They don't know. But we need to rededicate ourselves back to God. Watch what he does in verse number one. He says, when he oh finished, Solomon finished praying. Listen to this: fire, supernatural fire, not regular fire. Supernatural fire came down from heaven. Nobody made a mention. Nobody had a lighter. This came down from heaven. It came straight down from heaven. And consume the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Amen. Now catch this first part. He finished praying to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Fire comes down from heaven, consumes, burns the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? Listen to this. Thank you, Holy Ghost, another revelation. God burns up everything that's human. Okay, let's see what. He burns up everything that's natural, which is supernatural. And now, he replaces it with his glory. He had get out all, watch this, I'm going to use this word. He gets rid of all deficiencies that will hinder the glory. He burns up the burnt offering, which they set for him anyway. And then he burns the sacrifices. And watch what happens. And the glory of the Lord filled, overflowed the temple or the house or the place. Where they were at. He fills it with his glory. Right where they're at. He filled the place with that with his glory. <laughs> now coming in close. Remember? Exodus 
40 and 34, 35, right? Moses took into the temple. Remember? As uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 14, the priests could not enter in because of the glory. Well, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 2, look at what it says. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled, was it, had filled the Lord's house. The Lord's house. Okay. Because the Lord, because the glory of the Lord, the Lord, the glory of the Lord, has filled the Lord's house. God's going to fill his house. God's glory is going to fill God's house. It doesn't say anything about man's glory. It says the Lord filled the Lord's God's response responded positively to Solomon's prayer. Ooh, when you pray right. When you pray right. Hear me. When you pray right, you pray righteous. That will reach God's heart. That will reach God's life. When you pray right, God responded positively to Solomon's prayer. By igniting the sacrifices with heavenly fire. <laughs> this, the glory, the glory field, the field, field. This was the form, this beat is going to smoke away. This, this was a form of a thick, <laughs> a thick cloud that filled the temple with darkness. Now watch what I'm going to give you. See daylight right there now? This glory cloud was in the house so thick it looked like night. And it was broad daylight. The sun is shining just like it is now. But God fills the house with his glory and darkens what was supposed to be light with his glory. Now, just now, I'm just going to say, he darkens the house so everybody can't look at one another. Amen. You can't see each other. It's so dark. Amen. And all that you can see is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so God sets it up like that. And I heard, I heard, I heard Elder Walker, when he was praying for Sean some years ago, when Sean uh, burned her face, I believe it was. Uh, Huh? Quisha. Quisha. Sean's daughter, Quisha. Burn was a face. A face. Burn her face back. He goes into prayer room. Hear me. This is not, this, this is equivalent to what's in the Bible. He goes to prayer room and prays. He said there was nothing but a cloud and smoke. Hear what I'm going to tell you. He prays so fervently. To God about his granddaughter, that God heals the granddaughter. Amen. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. What happened was, because when you get burned, you won't have a mark. He prayed so fervently, and the smoke filled the room where he was praying at, and then the girl did not have any scars on her face at all. That's what she got. position, in the right position, in the right mindset, the right spirit, and the right attitude, you will feel the presence of God in your house. Yeah. I'm telling you, I know from experience. I know from experience. Had a need. The thing going on was something about you were urgent. And number two, you write right. with God. Yeah. God starts to move yeah. in your midst. Yes, he will. 
And my prayer goes, and what's it? My prayer goes into worship. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, my prayer goes into worship. Yeah. And as I go into worship and adore him and, and in my adoration to him, God starts to move.
but it's still good. I lost my job, but it's still good. I lost my car, he's still good. I lost my son, he's still good. I lost my daughter, he's still good. I don't miss the Lord, but it's safe. He is good. And watch this. The next thing they say, and his mercy, his compassion, endures forever. I'm going to. Oh, I'm in devastation. But he is still good.
Thank you, Jesus. You feel like you're all by yourself? You feel like you're alone? I would tell somebody something, he's good. And you're not alone. He says, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm all time with you. You don't feel like I'm with you. You don't seem like I'm with you. He said, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age or the end of the world, I am with you. And I am going to abandon you. I'm not going to abandon you. Oh, bless you. I'm 
Um, Sister Taylor. Oh, 
Oh God, draw us closer to you. Draw not to us. If we draw not to you, you draw not to us. God, I can't say that enough. Draw us. And as we draw to you, you draw to us. And Jesus, oh God, I call it the magnet effect. The magnet effect, God. Help us to have the magnet effect in Jesus' name. God, I pray that come to your name to before us. Bless Manita and family and the loss of our stepmom. Mm. Give comfort. Give strength. Yeah. You reach where no one can reach. Yeah. You touch where no one can touch. Not only that family, God, but bereaved families everywhere. Yeah. You comfort and you reach. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, I pray, God, you bless God. Uh, Kim Cruz. Touch Kim Cruz with your mighty hand, God. Move by your mighty power and your mighty hand. In the name of Jesus. God bless the Taylor. Touch and bless her, God. In the name, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh God, I pray, God. It's the reason as a prayer for an individual. You bless that individual. You touch that individual. You move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Touch. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray, God, you bless the evangelists, your mind of the evangelists. You know, Rupert, that's excellent. You said you are Jehovah Rapha. That means you are the restorer of health. Restore health in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand. Move by your mighty power. Touch her in the name of Jesus. From the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch the Tina. Touch the body of uh, uh, First Lady uh, Junior Johnson. Touch her body with your mighty hand. You're healing this way from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Touch in the name of Jesus. And request a prayer for Sharon. Touch Sharon's body. Bring those numbers up. Oh God, bring those numbers up in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Touch. Share his body in the name of Jesus. Sister uh, Larissa asked for prayer for a, a former co-worker. Touch his body with your mighty hand of healing. Oh God, do it, God, do it, God. Do it for him in the name of Jesus. Touch her shoulder. We have every ache, every pain, and discomfort, and touch her soul with your mighty hand of healing. God, all that asks for prayer, God, we have a need, supply every need, God. Bless in the name of Jesus. Open doors, because you have set a door, open door before them. And let's keep doing right. And we keep doing right, God. Have we keep doing right. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray you bless. I pray as we. Our vows take the Lord's table. And you'll bless us. As we are commemorating your son's death and suffering on Calvary's cross. And you'll bless in a mighty and abundant way. I pray, God, that we will remember the significance of the Lord's table. It is very important. It's a form, also a form of worship. A form of worship. Yes. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. We ask you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. To our visitors, thank you again for coming. I trust you have enjoyed yourself while being here in this worship experience. And I trust you will come back again. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And, and if any visitors need to leave,
Lord's Supper is a, is a division of bread and wine as a symbol of Christ's body and blood, taken by the members of the church and commemorate his suffering and death to show their faith and participation in the merits of sacrifice. It's an institution. I say the institution of supper at the close of the last partial feast, which he kept with the disciples before he suffered. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my life. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave them to the Lord. And all of it, for this is my bread of the New Testament, which is shared for many for the remission of. God, I ask that you change it from a temple use to a spiritual use in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for you sending your son and your son giving his body and shedding his blood for our sins. Once on a song years ago, what shall wash me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What shall make me whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. Thank you, God. We ask you to bless the cup that each one of us offered from our mouth of the table. Bless it. We pray blessings. We pray strength through this cup. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. You will get your elders together and just fill off the top part for the the bread. Oh. 
Lord, in your house. We pray you continue to fill the house with your glory. That you be glorified, that you be honored in this house. God, have your way that we be blessed. We be strengthened. We be encouraged. We be uplifted. Oh, God, bless us, mighty and bless us abundantly. God, as we leave the house, go our various ways, get every vehicle, bind every mechanical problem, dispatch your angels round about your people. Come in with your blood. Bless the mighty, bless the mother. Now to him that's able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, mass, and your native power, both now and forever. And the good God say, Amen. Amen. So, Brooks is going to lead you out, not you. Thank you, Sister Brooks. Thank you.